Hello everyone, and welcome to our continued Let's Play of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. Yeah, with no Extension Edition. Left. I don't know. I where we left off, because I know it was in the middle of a pad. Yeah, like, whatever. whatever, it'll be fine. You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Explain that! Exactly that, whatever <laughs> that is. Don't <laughs> forget, you said there was no accomplice. Ah. Oh. No, it's so terrifying. We don't know what it's about. <laughs> Tell us exactly how the witness could have carried the bust from the cafeteria. Wait, why are you surprised? I said, so... "What a right. we should already know this." Yep, we definitely have a problem here. But this is no place to get perplexed. I've got to get my wits about me and prove how things happened once and for all. You know, the case was really short. If you saw it right now, you know, isn't it, it weird? It's... I guess it's like, what, this is like day two? Mm, yeah. And day two and save was really short investigation wise. Well, yeah. Honestly, I'll give you a little spoiler. Um, yeah. Every Phoenix Strike game after the th first game, at least I think, they um changed it because they had the three day rule, but people said even the three days of investigating was just too much. Like, that is a lot of investigating and. It's not really what people love about the game, so most games they shortened it so almost every case is wrapped up in two days. So the guy got even more pissy. It's like, you know what, we can't afford this shit. <laughs> two days. Exactly. Unless you're feeling good, then you can do three days. No, at least two days. It's, it's gotta be two days. Just, that's, that's, yeah. We have such a short budget, there's too many criminals. But maybe I guess they accuse everyone of guiltiness. Well, yeah, probably so. All right, Mr. Wright, let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bust from the cafeteria back to his room? Obviously, he used my cookie bag. <laughs> he used this small seasoning bottle. Good. Possibly. Let's see. Take that! A monkey? Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. Really? I wish no one in this court knows money other than you and <laughs> maybe that guy on stand. Probably so. Also, that sounds sexual somehow. I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I was gonna say, like, everybody loves money. Sounds like a double statement, but that, not in a sexual way. And there's always shiny objects of any size. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. Shiny objects of any size. Mm. But if they are, they're not usually shiny. Yeah, it's fair. I know you have no experience with that, but they're not usually shiny. <laughs> For instance, he stole the ventriloquist's ring. <laughs> oh. So are you saying the witness had a monkey steal the bus? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole on his own, and then brought it back home. Wait, well... Why would you make that your point? I don't know. It seems weird to me. <laughs> like, unless you have already defined he can't order the monkey, it's like... So, you're saying this whole case is hinged on good luck? <laughs> this whole case is hinged on how much that monkey wanted to steal that bust. Home? Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room? Oh my god. Purpose are not allowed to have rooms. It's against the law. Right here in part 24 of Fuck You Laws. Oh man, that'd be hilarious if he, he actually was like, acrobats can't have rooms. Hell, the entire circus shouldn't be able to exist. Objection, but the bus was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't either that shiny. Objection! Maybe you should put the whip down sometimes and read the court record. Why? Those it's are some very record. nice cards he's holding. Wait, what? Whip is a court record. <laughs> it should even if you were playing here and you open the court record, it's just stick sheet and it's a whip and it has all your information written on it like a sheet sheet. <laughs> That'd be pretty amazing. Oh man. I wonder what Phoenix Wright's court record looks like, considering all the weird things we're carrying around all the time. Wait, maybe it's when anyone likes it. Yeah, she has a garbage truck driving after. Man, 
Sounds out right. Fe Phoenix Wright secretly has the bag of holding. Yes. yes. And they are made of platinum, which is very shiny. Jeez, I mean, have these <laughs> things made of freaking platinum? Isn't that a little, I don't know, overkill? Where's the picture of the bust? Jeez, I can't even... There but he is. didn't make it. Well, I know he didn't make it, but seriously, that's hey, obviously, just... <laughs> entertainers make so much money, we just don't enough to just look down the other one. Exactly! We, we're just like the most durable metal ever. Gotta make sure these cards don't bend. Yeah, maybe just, like, colored in pattern. <laughs> maybe. Wow! Acro! Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bust back to your room. How, though? Okay, so he's actually giant. He's <laughs> actually Godzilla. Oh, boy. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be on the market for a new room yet. Jeez, and this guy <laughs> has some high standards for monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Monkey, make me tequila. What, you can't? Wait, get the fuck out. You're fired. Uh... Order, order, I said order, Miss Von Karma! Where is this bust in question at the moment? Why, well, obviously, Phoenix Wright is carrying it. <laughs> um, um, I, um, I don't know. We're searching for it as we speak. Hmm, this is a strange turn of events. That monkey did not steal the bust. Then what happens to this case? Well, in that event, something else must have been used for the murder weapon. Uh, hmm. Or maybe this bust was the murder weapon, but it was used by accident. That's possible. Maybe Echo saw Money's mountain of stolen goods and then thought to use one of them. So, right, he was good enough at planning ahead of her, like. Boxing, but he didn't plan ahead what he's gonna <laughs> sell at the guy. I guess not. He was just like, well, I have a giant pile of shit in my room. I'm sure I can kill him with something. Imagine if he had nothing. He's like, okay, I gotta sell my weird shit. This is slightly <laughs> awkward, but I can do it. Yeah, that would be amazing. He was like, God damn it, money. Why have you only been picking up like paper clips for the past week? I think we've more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that this was entirely possible that Acro was the murderer. Moron! Okay. <laughs> Good Good statement. That's yeah. who you are calling it. I don't know. Mr. Wright's argument was so circular, I'm still a bit dizzy. Ah, uh, sure. Is that a pun? I, I don't know. On circus? I, I mean, it is, it is, it's not on circus, it's a pun on circus. But like, like on circus stuff, like, you know. Oh, maybe so. Like, like on show business stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's de I, that's definitely a possibility. I mean, it I'm still be a pun, but... His argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Ow! It doesn't. Don't seem so flamboo, flamboozled. <laughs> Especially by this flaw of an attorney. Jeez, is is flamboozled a word that usually shows up in Germany? I thought it showed. It was what it showed up in America. I've never heard of such a word myself. To Me be neither. honest. All right, so flamboozled officially made up by von Karma. Maybe she isn't German. <laughs> Maybe she's actually like African. <laughs> that would explain everything. You've forgotten absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And what is that? It's a good question. You should know. The symbol. Hmm. See, you forgot that you that you fraud of a magic line was spotted at the scene of the crime. Wait, why is he fraud <laughs> if you say he can fly? I don't really he's know. He's pretty good magic line. Uh, he's he's pretty good at his job at like of not being a fraud if you freaking yeah. Ah. There was, there's no reason to doubt the clown's testimony, because, I mean, he seemed totally okay. <laughs> That's true! How would you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let it beat you now. I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. 
when the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, that's a Barry, and the other was the murderer himself. Answer this, and only this, Mr. Phoenix White. The clown saw the murderer. Who was it then? This guy. But obviously, yeah, it was. Well, I don't know anything hilarious. <laughs> it was. It was clearly Maya Faye, like Frank, always. But she's, she's always a killer. Yeah. Okay, it was, was obviously a dead brother. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. He came, was back from the <laughs> he came back riding on a dragon. Yep, exactly. And he's like, I will avenge myself. Yeah. Take that! He saw Max's b. Ow! He asked who was the other person most saw on the scene. That evidence has nothing to do with the question. Objection! Ah, contraire, mon frere. <laughs> when did you become French, Phoenix? But yeah. obviously he's French because he's every nationality ever. I mean, <laughs> he's an American, Japanese, French dude. <laughs> Makes sense. I, I think I think we've established at this part that everyone can just magically change their nationalities when they really feel like it. Um, you know, von Karma is an Australian German, Phoenix is a French Japanese American, uh, Maya Faye is an alien, and that, that's just. <laughs> Maya, <that>. yeah. <laughs> She's always an alien. It does indeed have something to do with the question. Mo said that he saw Max's silhouette, but he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. You know? I know this is a third case, but this whole case hinges on the fact that Mo, he's a really, really blind. <laughs> or just a moron. You know, it kind of does. In fact, it hinges a lot on everyone being a moron. Imagine if the the guy hadn't, like, gone in disguise. Listen, so how does this make sense? Like, he said he saw Max, mm -hmm. and he saw the Ringmaster, but... Didn't he see the ringmaster in the disguise of Max and the bust of Max? So shouldn't he be like, well, there was Max killing Max? <laughs> you, you know, you'd think so. Uh, oh, I understand. I... No, this is going to be really stupid, but I will... Because there's no way he saw Max's cloak, right? Because the cloak on the bust... Like, isn't nearly that long. So, somehow, the cloak got on the bust, I'm willing to bet. But, then the head fell off? And I don't know what happened to the hat. Oh, yeah, the hat did fall off. I, and I the think. roses? Yeah, because we have the hat. I don't know about the roses. He didn't. Not, he never saw the roses. I know, but why didn't he see the roses? Because the guy stared at the roses. Um. Now, so, where did the roses go? Why did why weren't the roses on the dead guy anymore? I don't really know what happened to the roses. Those were never established. Like those were established and never really had any purpose at all. Because the, the, he because the whatever dude the the puppet guy saw the roses. Yeah. Or d so. I don't remember if he did. Yeah, I think we, he did. We, yeah, we it was like one the yeah, we brought it up several times. He was always like the three symbols. Oh my god. So point being. I'm confused. I don't know. How, how is that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw was that night... Wait, what Mo actually saw that night was Max's bust. Objection. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he saw was just him to be wearing it, so... Objection. There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. Or a cloak like that could easily get snagged on the bust if they came into contact. Told you. Well, that, that's apparently just what happened. Idiot. Who in the right mind would put a cloak on a bust? It doesn't matter who put it on the bust. Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? That question is of the utmost importance in this case, don't you agree? Oh, he caught me. Did he? I don't know if it really is. So let's have it, Miss Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? The clown, obviously. Russell Berry. 
Nah, that's on. <laughs> Probably. Uh, take that! What, him? You're saying it was the victim himself, Russell Berry? That's what I'm saying. He, I mean, the victim himself placed a cloak on the bus. Place the cloak isn't really the right, right way of putting it. Then just what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? You already said I could have snagged it safe on Exactly. Yourself. Explain yourself, boy. Nick, you really have a handle on all of this. Obviously, I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all the pieces together. There's really only one picture I can paint, anyways. <laughs> I'm not a very good artist, after all. <laughs> and that is a stick man who is supposed to be Maya getting stabbed in the face by a chainsaw. <laughs> just to, like, it doesn't matter what he's done to paint, it will always just end up being dead. <laughs> that would be pretty hilarious. Ah. Uh... I can imagine, like, he's in a therapist section, and, like, in every picture the guy brings up, he's just like, What's this? My getting stabbed in the face with a chainsaw. What's this? My getting stabbed in the face with a chainsaw. It's just, that, no, that's the best <laughs> anger. Uh, Alright. So, you want to know what really happened that night? Let's step back in time. So we do need at least one dragon. Accurate. <laughs> God damn it. Acker used the rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bust, and dangled the bust out of his okay, bedroom wait, window. Okay, first question. Mm -hmm. How did he dislodge the rope from the box after lowering it? Um, that is an excellent question. I don't know. And, and by because that I mean... he's pretty good at untying a rope that he can't reach. Yeah, I don't- I can't think of any way you could, like, efficiently lower it, like... Because you could just not tie a rope next to the bust, but the- I mean, next to the thing. But the thing is that you'd have a rather unstable rope that might just come loose, so... Yeah, that doesn't sound efficient. I don't know. And dangled the bust out of his bedroom window directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene, of course. At the time, the ringmaster is wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house. By none other than a ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trilo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And then, <clears throat> that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. The way that is drawn, Acro looks like freaking like a superhero. <laughs> you know, he just... But he looks kind of like Schwarzenegger. <laughs> you know, like, he like, does. If you had given him a machine gun, he would have probably been like, in a Vietnam uh, movie. Schwarzenegger in a wheelchair. Yeah, I mean, it's like, see, it's like one of those Vietnam movies, but in that mm. one he just gets crippled, <laughs> and then he's like a cripple who has to fight Vietnamese people. <laughs> that sounds very entertaining and stupid. Just like a good Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Remember, Mew Linus, get to the rear chair! <laughs> now this is when the magic happens. At the very instant that the bust hit the victim doesn't really look like what's happening here, but go on. Right, but like oh, God there we go. From heaven. <laughs> Jeez, that's intense. <laughs> yeah, it's just what the buzz did. That's, that's, how ex that's exactly looked. how it happened. That was pretty amusing and stupid looking. You wait just a second there, Mr. Phoenix White. As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't cool. It can't be. <laughs> it's still a little early to be getting so upset, Miss Von Karma. The circus isn't over yet. Uh, you suck. <laughs> uh, we have to put on a good show, though. With the shock of impact, it threw up the cloak and it just... Wait. With the shock of impact, it threw up the cloak and it got snagged onto the bust. I thought that's what you were showing us in the picture, yeah. So then the sound was heard by a witness, and he took a look out of his window. 
That he was, was laughing his ass off. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, that guy got pooped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Man, Mo, you're kind of a dick. <laughs> this was, of course, Lawrence Mo Curls, the clown. When Mo looked out his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, having completed the crime, Acro naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Mo saw the bust being raised with the cloak dangling on it, primarily because in his wheelchair he couldn't see out of his window. Suspicious. We don't have eyes. <laughs> At least so. I don't really know how he couldn't see out his window, but I guess he couldn't. So he just kept pulling the bust up. Which is also why it didn't leave a mark in the snow. <laughs> that's, just, that's just how busts work yeah and that is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be now you know how the murder actually took place and now you know who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the scene acro could have only been you but they state that he forgot about the roses. This case is flawed. <laughs> it's not as flawed as the whole eating whatever steak, but it's flawed. Yeah, yeah. Because this there case should have is... been an imprint in the snow by the bust. Mm -hmm. And the guy should have had his roses yeah. on him, so they I should agree. have instantly noticed that. I, I, like, I, I'm going to give this case that it isn't as flawed as the third case from the first game, but for whatever reason, yeah. So, like... I, I honestly, now that we've gotten more into it, I don't even hate it nearly as much, but there are a lot of little flaws that you can poke out like that that are honestly pretty glaring when you think about it. Like, yeah, that would have been a pretty huge thing if there were just this huge, weird snow print. I could playing mind games with all of us. Also, it doesn't what matter, happens? he's already proven guilty. Also, what happened to the cloak? Like, what did Acro do with it? Wait, he ate it. <laughs> he, like, literally, he's like, fuck, that wasn't supposed to happen. It's like, right, I gotta hide the, I gotta hide the evidence somehow. Ketchup. <laughs> that, would have, that would be pretty amazing. He sure has. I mean, he's come to the end of his rope now. So... What now? If Grace was was rather long winded here. But do you have any evidence to prove that your fairy tale is true? Uh, evidence? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is this blasphemy in my courtroom? We do things by Yu Gi Oh cards. <laughs> Yeah, both of you pull a Yu-Gi-Oh card and the highest attack point monster wins the game. Oh man, it's just like Yu-Gi-Oh Zero. Exactly. In this card, only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my whip. And I guess the judge doesn't. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. And united with power of whip and gavel, <laughs> they are Superman. Apparently so. They are, they are the Wonder Twins. <laughs> Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we use uh, some evidence? Nick, they say they want evidence. Oh man, you're not imagine. Dead. Are you a you translator? <laughs> I, I don't know. Also, just realize the judge has a hammer and Von Karma has a whip. The judge could be Thor and Von Karma could be, uh, I think, Wonder Woman is her name. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> Superheroes. I don't know. What are we? Uh, just explain. <laughs> I don't know who we are. Um, I can't really think of anyone off with spiky hair off the top of my head, though I'm sure there's plenty. Spike! <laughs> yeah, we're it's probably Spike. I just explained how there can only be one possible murder method. There's still something unusual at Moe's eyewitness at account. Unusual. A contradiction, actually. Okay, then. You said I can get out of the sham. Space sham. <laughs> uh, it's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. <laughs> apparently, apparently... Too much talking. 
<laughs> They're stalking while whipping. <laughs> so present some evidence to the court that backs your claims. Actually, I want. Do we ever? Do we ever fight anyone who actually has an assistant? Or are, are they, oh, it's like there's the one law that we have on our side where we are allowed to have assistants <laughs> and they are not. You know, that's actually a fair point. Like, uh, they just never do for some reason. Well, I guess we just never see them with their assistants for some reason. But, like, I mean, Edgeworth technically has Gumshoe. I mean, that's but honestly basically... Gumshoe is he's basically... Neutral. Yeah. Well, he's basically the universal assistant, which means the... I guess that's the way of fairing the game out, is the as, as much shit as we get being the defendant... We, we get an assistant, and the prosecutors just get gumshoe. Which I mean, you wanna, I assume in one of the games, at some point, they probably had, like, a dual prosecutor team. Which yeah. makes me think of Yu-Gi-Oh. It's, it's a definitely a possibility, and yeah. Okay. okay. You want hard proof. <laughs> want hard proof, huh? I, I don't know. Oh, wait, we haven't shown... Hmm. But yes, that one I would say. You, but I, it's not what he was referring to. What? I don't think this is what he's referring to. I'm not really sure. I mean, that one is pretty good proof concerning that it's a note saying that the guy should show up there, but yeah, it's not. Yeah. Proof that reveals the magic trick. Hmm. I rivaled the trick. God, I don't know. <laughs> but what, I think we already described the magic trick. I don't know what else you want from us, Judge. Uh. Alright, so take that! Problem is Max's three symbols. You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Moe's testimony. The silk hat was one, the white roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all of these contradictions. You fool. Do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Mo said yesterday. He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the bust. Okay, like once again, Mo must have been freaking blind to not notice that this silk hat was like... Maybe he's just colorblind. Maybe so. It's like, yeah, I don't know, it's all purple to me. Makes sense. If you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Objection. Fine, you've got one. But what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? <laughs> How short is your memory, Judge? Right. It's why he doesn't do this. Yeah, I guess so. He wanted to be a defense attorney, but then it turned out he couldn't remember his food, <laughs> like his breakfast. That seems remember... like it'd be really bad criteria for a judge, too, then, but I guess it works for right. Phoenix, right? This universe, it doesn't matter. The <laughs> judge just hits things with his grabber. Yeah, pretty much. Man, I hope one. I know we'll never see another judge in the entire universe, probably, but if we did, I'd want to see Larry Butts as the judge. Remember what the ventriloquist remember what the ventriloquist said in court. He said that the witness says white roses on Max's chest by that night, but the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown, the, clown's, oh, sorry. the clown said that there were no white roses. I'd like to see you try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Of course, I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snagged onto the bust. The cloak snagged onto the bust, what happened to the white roses? Uh, 
They also snagged onto the bust, I guess. Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust, it means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bust. Ah. Which explains why Mo didn't see it. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bust. Order! Order! This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Wait, what is he like, trying to do? <laughs> I know, seriously. I don't end if this, so we have to kill him, we can fly. <laughs> yeah, let's... I don't see how this is any less ridiculous sounding than that. Let's do this, Nick. Then maybe one we'll come up with funny slow in the tower. Jeez, with the sky and his birds. Thanks so much for that, Stevie. Mr. White, do you mind? What is it? You took your time to research our circus, didn't you? Somehow, somehow I forgot that you have to prove absolutely everything in this universe. Because I was like, ah, oh, we got him on the ropes. But of course we're not going to have him beaten until we show that that happened. Yes. Well, yes, I did. Is there something you think I that I didn't? If you did, then maybe you understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Moto. This witness fears an incredible debt of gratitude toward the ringmaster. Anyone with any relation to the circus is well aware of this. Uh, admittedly, I know that it's it that obviously it, we never have to all that stuff, but um, <laughs> the same could still be said for our client. I mean, what's his motive? The ringmaster is paying him literally everything the goddamn circus made. But it's not enough. That's his motive. Probably that that would there's, be their opinion. There's absolutely no way someone like this would kill the ringmaster. We all loved Sauron. Hmm. No one <laughs> Sauron, yeah. the ringmaster. He actually, maybe that's all he wanted to do, make a giant circus. <laughs> he just wanted to get all the races in middle Earth together and make a circus. But You know, that was, like, that, that was his one ring to rule them all. It wasn't a normal ring. It was like one of those big circus hoop rings. Exactly. But the devs just didn't fucking want it. <laughs> They had, they had circus mono uh, monopoly, and they just they didn't want to give it up. Yeah. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Alcos' story. Learn about his relationship with the ringmaster, his life up until now. What do we do? There's no doubting that Alco deeply respects the ringmaster. Acro's motive. Hmm. It seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well. However, I feel this is a good place to take a break. I'll listen to the rest of Ling... I'll listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after recess. Then Ling. Um. <laughs> Apparently so. But we'll now take a ten minute recess. Sounds good. I could go for some lunch, I guess. To be continued. Ten minute lunch. <laughs> I don't it's think I had enough time to eat a steak. I don't think I could do it. That's not enough. Uh, December 30th, 2.17, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 5. And the end of a pod. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Thank you all for watching, and we hope to see you all next time.